Zahid. I term it as an attack on the Constitution, and this was an act perpetrated by terrorists, not by French elements. Madam, let me start by this caveat by saying that I am the only intolerant politician in India in this house. The rest are paragon of virtue, beacon of free speech, and upholders of justice. What we have seen over here is that we have two political power centers. One, co one calls Muslims and Dalits as puppies and dogs. The other throws crumbs at us and tells us to wag the tail. My concern over here is that why is it that after 68 years of independence, after 68 years of independence, the Muslims cannot find or rent a house or a flat in any metropolitan city. Is this tolerance we're talking about? Why is it, madam, that my dropout rate and Dalit dropout rate start at the age of 11? Is this dropout? Is this tolerance? Why is it that you open more police stations in Muslim ghettos than schools? Is this tolerance? Why is it that Juhapura and Gowandi in Mumbai have become dumping yard of the city medical waste, not for school or schools of excellence? Why is it that out of 100, only three are Muslim graduates. Is this intolerance? People say we don't study. NSSO data of 2011 is there, which clearly says that 11% OBC Muslims having 10th class qualification get only 11% employment, the other get 23. Why is it, madam, that after 23 years of Babri Majid, that the accused have got Padma Bhushan, but they have not been convicted? We have seen various governments, Congress government, UPA government, United Front government, NDA government. Is this tolerance? Let me ask a political intolerance question to this August House. Why is it, madam, that when I oppose the BJP, I am called an anti-nationalist, I am called a Jina in making. When I oppose the secular parties, I am called communal. Why is it that this, this country is saying that if you start, if you be with the secular party, you are secular. If you oppose the BJP, you become anti-national. How is it that these two political parties have appropriated the right of nationalism and secularism? I condemn their right. I continue to be intolerant because that is my democratic right. I want to know how is it that political intolerance when in 10 years imprisonment is given in Haryana for cow slaughter, Congress supports it. But I am intolerant. I am a communal. How is it that Tripura governor says on November, on, on November 19, on October 19, that free speech and tolerance can be celebrated if Muslims eat pork in, in the middle? Is this intolerance you're talking about? Madam Speaker, let me conclude by asking this very inconvenient, intolerant question to the government. That to, 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 the, let, 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 to the to the government and to the August uh, represent parties over here. Why is it that this is happening? Who, why have you taken my right to dissent? Why cannot I give a speech in Karnataka? Why cannot I give a speech in, in, in Uttar Pradesh? And why is it that 22% of Muslims are in jail under trials? Uh, West Bengal, 49%. Maharashtra 29%, UP 29%, is this tolerance? Madam, I conclude by the, uh, telling the government, the Home Minister asked for uh, recommendations, suggestions. My suggestion to the Honorable Home Minister is, your pride was hurt when a wrong allegation was made. I, I commend you for showing your pride. But you see, for 69 years I have been called a Pakistani. What about my pride? Would you rise up and protect my pride? Would you rise up and protect my integrity? My suggestion to the Honorable Home Minister is amend the NHRC Act. Given in the NHRC the power to inquire communal rights so the responsibility can be fixed on the SP and DM. I would request you form in your internal security division a section which monitors Hindu fanatics. If you don't do that, see what is happening in Myanmar, in Sri Lanka, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh. We require stability. The third step, form an Equal Opportunities Commission. Fifth step, Give constitutional status to NCM and a request to all the House. You talk about ISIS and Wahhabism. Remember, ISIS is an evil ideology. You cannot break us down into Wahhabism, Sufism. You have to take the whole Muslim community, which right now the whole Islamic world is condemning ISIS. Remember one thing, that ISIS cannot be defeated by bombs. ISIS can be, de can be defeated by cerebral debate. This is what needs to be happened. Madam, I conclude my speech by quoting us. A, 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 a share of Faiz said, Tujko kitno ka lahu chahiye arze watan, jo tere arze berang ko gulnar kare, kitne aho se tera kaleja thanda hoga, kitne aso se tere seharao ko gulzar kare. Thank you, madam. Very good, very good. Thank you, thank you. And just because two film actors, which almost I say in Make in India, their role contribution is very good. So let's not run down Shah Rukh Khan and Amir Khan. They have contributed substantially globally for India. <laughs>